Okay, ladies and gentlemen of Algebra 2, this is the uh, section on series. So this is the second part of Chapter 11, but I don't know why I call it Chapter 11 because you guys haven't seen a book all year. So series is going to be kind of adding sequences as we go. So let's take a look. Suppose the section of the amphitheater can seat 18 people in the first row, and each row can seat four more people than the previous row. Find the number of people who could sit in the first five rows. So if I'm looking at this from the perspective of a sequence, A1 is going to be 18. My common difference is going to be 4. Okay, so the number of people who could sit in the first five rows, well, I want the first five pieces of that sequence. I want the first five numbers in that sequence. So it's just going to be 18, 22, 26, 30, 30, and 34. So now that means row 1, row 2, row 3, row four, row five, hold that many seats respectively. So how many people can sit in the first five rows just becomes a matter of adding them. So that's going to be 130 people. So now, in the late 1700s, Carl Friedrich Gauss was a student at a small German schoolhouse. Gauss was a bit of a smart aleck. He liked to get in trouble, so the teacher was fed up. So as a punishment, he made Gauss sit in a corner. I, the way I heard it, he sent him out in the hallway. And add up the first 100 integers with the thought of this being a very length, lengthy and tedious task. Gauss finished within seconds. How did he do it? Well, here's what he did. So the integers go 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 all the way up to 100. So here's what he figured out. He figured out that, you know, 1 and 100 make 101. 2 and 99 make 101, 3 and 98 make 101, 4 and 97 make 101. So what you end up with is 101 50 times. So that's what he did. He added up what's 101 times 50, which still is not easy to do in your head, but it takes a lot less time than sitting there going 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 100. So that's what he figured it out. So you use kind of what's called an arithmetic series, where you're adding over and over and over again. All right, so there's kind of two functions to use. The one on the left says, if I know the first term and I know the common difference, I'm going to use that. Second one, if I know the first term and the last term, I'm going to use that. Okay, so let's take a look. So Aiden did push-ups every day in March. He started on March 1st and did increase the number of push-ups done each day by one. He did a total of 1,085 push-ups for the month. How many push-ups did Aiden do on March 1st? So he did a total of 1,085. Each day he increased by one. So my common difference here is going to be one. So how many push-ups did Aiden do on the first day? Well, I'm going to use this one. Okay? I'm not going to use this one because I don't know what he did on the first day. I don't know what he did on the last day. All I know is the sum. So that one doesn't help me very much. So the second piece of information I need to know is how many days are in March. Which, you got to check, does March have 30 days or 31? And it has 31 days. So March has 31 days. So n in this case is going to be 31. So 31 divided by 2 times 2 times a to the 1. a to the 1 is what we're looking for, plus 31 minus 1 times a common difference of 1. All that's equal to the, 10, the 1085. Okay, so let's, simple, let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so 31 divided by 2 times 2. This is going to be 31 a to the 1 plus 30 times 15, divide, times 15 and a half. All right, so I take this, distribute here, distribute here. So 15.5 times 30 is going to be 465. That's going to equal 1085. So 1085 minus 465 divided by 31. So on the first day, he did 20 push-ups. So radio station has given away a total of $124,000 in August. 
they increase the amount given away each day by 100 bucks. How many should get, how much should they give away the first day? So again, I know a common difference. I'm looking for the first day. I don't know the first day and the last day, so I'll blow that one up. My total amount is $124,000. It's August. August also has 31 days. 2 times A1, which is what we're looking for, plus 31 minus 1 times 100, like that. So this becomes, I distribute this, I multiply this together, that's going to be 30 times 100, which is going to be $3,000. This is going to be 31A1, and that's going to be 3 times... 15.5, so that's going to be 436,500. So, algebra comes into play and is very helpful here. Division. So on the first day, they need to give away 2,500 bucks. So find the sum of all positive odd integers less than 180. So here's where I know the first positive odd integer. I know the last positive odd integer. I know how many odd integers there are between 0 and 180. Okay, it's going to be 90. So... It's going to look like this. So 90 divided by 2 times 180. So 45 times 180. So that sum is going to be 8,100. Okay? Number of odd integers, first odd integer, last odd integer, less than 180. That one's pretty straightforward, I hope. So find the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence in which the first one is negative 16, a to the n is 33, and s to the n is 68. So here's where I want to use this one because I know the first and I know the last. I just don't know what n is. All right, so the sum is 68. I don't know what that is, but I do know that this is negative 16 plus 33. So 68 equals n over 2. So that's going to be negative 16 plus 33 divided by 2. So that's going to be 68 equals 8.5 n divided by 8.5 divided by 8.5. So that's going to be 8. So what does that mean? That means the first term is negative 16. A to the nth, that means the eighth term is 33. So to figure out what the common difference is, which is what I need to figure out the next three terms, this is my first term, this is my eighth term. So that means to figure out my eighth term, I took my first term plus my common difference times 7. So that means 33 equals negative 16 plus 7d, add 16, add 16, this becomes 49, so my common difference is 7. So the first three terms, negative 16 plus 7, plus 7 again, there's my first three terms. So this is going to be the sum, I showed some of you guys how to do this on your calculator. All right, so here's kind of what this means. This means that I start at 1 and I end at 10, and each time I put n in there, then this sigma, this whole big thing sigma, just means add it. So that means I'm going to take 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5 all the way through. Okay, dot, 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 all the way to 3 times 10. So... I can sit there and crank that out. I showed some of you guys how to do it in the calculator. Or what I can do is this. I can figure out the first term and the last term really, really easily and then plug it into there. So what I can do is say this. The sum of the 10 together are going to be 10 divided by 2 times 3 plus 30. 
that means I'm going to have 5 times 33. So 5 times 33 is 165. So if I throw this in here, it's a little bit different, but it's still kind of the same idea, except now I'm starting at 5 and I'm ending at 8. So the first one's going to be 3 times 5 minus 1, so that's 14. The last one's going to be 3 times 8 minus 1, which is going to be 23. So it's only 5, 6, 7, 8. It's only four total numbers. All right, so I'm going to have 4 divided by 2, 14 plus 23. So that means I'm going to take 2 times 37, which is going to be 74. Okay, suppose you email a joke to, a friend, to three friends on Monday. Each of those friends sends it to three people on Tuesday. Each person then receives it to three more people on Wednesday, and so on. How many people have read the joke by Friday? Okay, so you read the joke on Monday and send it to three friends. Okay, so... You send it to three friends. They send it to three friends. So this is all Monday. On Tuesday, they send it to three more friends. On Wednesday, they receive it to more friends. How many people have read it by Friday? Okay. So this is going to be multiplied over and over and over again. Now, you start with the, yeah, you start with the initial joke. All right. And you send it to three people. on Monday, so on the first day. How many people have read it by Friday? So there, each person sends it to three more people. So three people you send it to, send it to another three people, send it to another three people, send it to another three people, send it to another three people. So you're going to take three to the fifth plus you, because you're the one that started this whole thing. So one plus 243, it's going to give you 244 people have read it. So, geometric series. Again, one on the left. If I know the first term and I know the common ratio, that's what I want to do. Here, if I know the first term and the last term, I want to do that one. So here, find the sum of geometric series for which A sub 1 is 1,000, A to the N is 125, and R is 1 half. I want to use this one because I have all those pieces. 1,000 minus 125 times 1 half divided by 1 minus 1 half. So 125 times 0.5, 1,000 minus that guy divided by 0.5. So the sum of this is going to be 1875. So, an arrange, Maria arranges some rows of dominoes so that after she knocks over the first one, each domino, domino knocks over two more dominoes when it falls. If there are ten rows, how many dominoes does Maria use? So, first one, then it starts doubling over and over again. So, R is going to be two. My first term is going to be one because there's one domino. I know that N is going to be ten. This is where I want to use this one. So, I'm going to take one. 1 minus 2 raised to the 10th all over 1 minus 2. So 2 to the 10th, 1 minus that, all that divided by negative 1. So she's going to use 1,023 dominoes. So, contagious disease is spread very quickly. Five people are ill during the first week of, of an epidemic. Each person who is ill spreads the disease to four people by the end of the next week. By the end of the tenth week of the epidemic, how many people have been affected by the illness? So, five people start off. So, that's your A1. And it spreads to four people by the end of the next week. So, there's your R. By the end of the tenth week, there's your N. How many people have the epidemic? Epidemic. So the 10th week, I'm using this again because I don't know how many people are ill that last week. So that's going to be 5 times 1 minus 4 raised to the 10th all over 1 minus 4. So 1 minus 4 to the 10th is a really big number times 5 is a really big number divided by negative 3 
is a still pretty big number. 1,747,625 people. So diseases spread very quickly. That is the point of that. All right, so look back over those. Let me know if you have questions. A lot of this is just kind of recognizing which one you want to use. Um, come ask for questions, and let's get this figured out.